you're listening to TF Talk Weekly, part of the TF Talk network of podcasts and live streams, where we give you the most relevant current stories in your fandom and more, all within 30 quick minutes or less. I'm your host, Mr. Starscream, and I'll be your guide to everything worth talking about that transformed since last episode. Discover more of our great shows at tftalk.net. Well, it looks like we made it to an actual first episode. Thanks for all your listener feedback, everybody. Also, everyone here at the TF Talk Network was discussing what we could do to make this a better show, and we'll try to implement suggestions from fans and cast members alike as we go. For now, we've settled on the name TF Talk Weekly, although that implies we will have to release an episode every week. We'll do our best, but in order to keep up this quality of production, we may have to cut specific segments here and there. We want to make sure you know there is a way to reach out to us at all times with feedback. So don't be afraid to send us an email at podcast at tfylp.com. Thanks for sticking around for our real first episode one. And with that, we'll head straight into the reveal spiel. I wasn't sure if there would actually be enough reveals to produce a story on new products every single week, but so far we are still in business. Just today, by way of a listing on Big Bad Toy Store, comes the announcement of MP38, Burning Convoy, scheduled for March 2020. No pictures are currently available on the listing, but we have TFYLP cast member Heng to give us a better idea of what to expect from this apparent redeco of Masterpiece Beast Convoy. So um, I'm Hingip Chan. I sometimes appear on the actual TFYLP podcast. I'm based in Australia. And for people who don't know about Burning Convoy, which is a repaint, a red repaint of Optimus Primal, everyone's favorite monkey. Without having a lot of knowledge of Beast Wars, and especially Beast Wars Second, I asked Heng to give us a little background on where Burning Convoy actually comes from in the fiction. Beast Convoy, Optimus Primal, gets sent to the future, meets up with Leo Convoy and his crew. They fight against Margin Zarak, who is massive. You know, they're unable to beat him because he's too big, so they use the Energon matrixes that they both have and gain superpowered forms. So I'm going to be pretty honest, by the time Leo Convoy Masterpiece gets released, I'm expecting Flash Leo Convoy to get released as well. In the Beast Wars second era, when they did the toy line, they actually did re-release a Burning Convoy and a Flash Leo Convoy uh, when the movie came out. So they're actually quite reasonably priced now if people want to buy the original toys. So I may consider getting Burning Convoy dependent on how the photos come out from Takara. If Flash Leo Convoy gets released, um, if even if I miss Burning Convoy at the time and Flash Leo Convoy gets confirmed, I will buy both. <laughs> 100%. I want to thank Heng for giving us all an idea of what to expect with MP38 Burning Convoy. And stay tuned for more reveals during our convention conversation later in this program. Our first item mentioned in this edition of On the Shelf is another steal of a deal. There are reports of Walmarts across the country selling the Commander Class Siege Jetfire figure for almost half off at $45. This toy hit the shelves only recently, and this pricing could be a temporary error. If you don't want to have to scramble to your local Walmart, it's suggested that you search the price of Siege Jetfire at your local Walmarts using the Walmart app. If you're able to find a deep discount jet fire, let us know. Happy hunting, everybody. Another recent on-the-shelf sighting is the Siege Reconnaissance Refractor 3-Pack revealed at San Diego Comic-Con. This set has been appearing on shelves at Toys R Us in Canada. This 3-Pack was recently revealed to have been made as a HasCon 2019 exclusive, but with the indefinite hiatus placed upon HasCon, we are all at least happy this cool G1-inspired set is seeing the light of day. There are also reports of pre-orders of this item from Hasbro Pulse beginning to ship, along with orders of Generation Selects Zatar and Nightbird, so watch those mailboxes. And speaking of Hasbro Pulse, we just made it through our very first SDCC exclusive release with their new website. The main draw for Transformers fans seemed to be the Ecto-35 edition of MP10 Optimus Prime, which sold out in mere minutes each day it was available. Many fans have been voicing their frustrations with the way Hasbro Pulse has been handling these limited exclusives, especially with Hasbro Pulse Premium, which is not a guarantee to be able to purchase any exclusives. It appears the demand for this figure may have been greater than originally thought. 
I also wanted to make a correction from last episode where we said that Siege Ratchet was appearing in Canada at Toys R Us. This was a mistake. It's actually EB Games. YouTube user TalLus76 brought this to our attention, and we wanted to make that correction for any Canadian listeners that may be heading to stores. That concludes this edition of On the Shelf. If you have any sightings to report yourself, please reach out to us, and we would love to feature you on the show. The one that got away. This week, we're featuring one of the most elusive and expensive pieces in all of Transformer land. And to help me illustrate just how rare this piece is, I recruited fellow cast member Peter Chavez to give us the 411 on a recently sold MISB Generation 2 ATB Megatron. I'm Peter Chavez. I'm a cast member on TFYLP. I go by Destron Peter in other social media formats. The uh, Generation 2 ATB Megatron uh, recently sold for $1,500 uh, from a seller going by the name uh, Consulting Eleven. The location of the seller is pretty close to uh, Pawtucket. And I can imagine that whoever the seller is, if they're not former Hasbro or current Hasbro employees themselves, they acquired the pieces from a current or former Hasbro employee. I've seen them for sale uh, and sell for as little as $1,000, aside from, you know, at general retail where they were 24-ish, 99. And I've seen listings as high as $7,000, which is just ridiculous. Typically, they go for right around the, uh, the $1,500 to $2,500 range. This one had a couple of uh, box dings, and that that would that, you know drag the the value on it down for for someone that was looking for that that pristine rare piece that would kind of you know stymie them or make them think twice about purchasing the item. There's a, in fact another ATB Megatron on eBay right now that's going for two grand, and its box is even worse shape. Starscream and and Megatron are two of the most. I mean, they're probably both in the top five of most iconic Transformers characters, and to have them in. A fun deco for these molds, just it, it bumps them up that much more. Thank you, Peter, for educating us on this super rare piece. Are you part of the ATB Megatron Club? Email us at podcast at tfylp.com and tell us how you acquired yours. The one that got away. There's at least one major story for TF Fiction here and now this week, and it has to do with the recent one-off comic from IDW, Transformers 84. Written by Cybertronian sage Simon Furman, this story is told non-linearly, but showcases Optimus Prime and the art crew prior to their exodus from Cybertron, as well as the clone teams and fan favorite Punch Counterpunch in the near future. Beyond its awesome art by Guido Guidi, the big news about this comic is that there is a major retcon. Hear that siren? That's our cannon alert, and it's going bonkers! In this story, for the first time ever, it is revealed that Optimus Prime and his Autobots did not leave Cybertron to escape the war. They in turn were traveling on a one-way suicide mission to lure Megatron and his Decepticons off of Cybertron so that the remaining bots would be able to rebuild without the conflict getting in the way. Whoa. If that made your head explode, you're not alone. The best cure for any spinning head syndrome would probably be to check out the one-off comic for yourself by visiting your local comic shop and picking up a copy. After expressing my problems viewing Cyberverse Season 2 on the Cartoon Network app last episode, I'm happy to announce that the first full 10-minute episode of Cyberverse has been uploaded to the Transformers official YouTube page. Starting not long after the close of Season 1, this episode, titled Sea of Tranquility, starts off strong with the Autobots and Decepticons in full battle on the moon. If you want to follow Cyberverse Season 2, be sure to subscribe to the Transformers official YouTube channel to be notified as new episodes are made available, and we'll try to cover them as much as we can in the future. And that's the Fiction Report. This week, I've recruited Microcasters cast member Anna to help spruce up the unofficial toy report and supply us with VIP passes to the third party. Take it away, Anna. Hey, this is Anna from Microcasters, bringing you a little bit of this week's third party Transformers news. First up is a rare release from Fans Toys. Their spoiler figure is now available at retailers, and you can even find at least one transformation video online so far. 
This is a masterpiece skill break down the second of their figures to make yet another third party Minasaur. This comes at the same time as pre-orders hit for their new movie color Galvatron, a recolor of their sovereign figure. Pre-orders appear to be sold out at most retailers due to the popularity of the figure, so keep an eye out if you want him as he comes out. Next, some good news slash some bad news. Last week, Zeta released a transformation video for their core star, their attempt at a Unicron figure. The video shows some serious panel folding and it's pretty neat. However, since then, all mentions of Core Star have become hard to find, with Zeta removing news about the figure and some of the videos even vanishing. We cannot say for sure what this all means, so if you're one of the people wanting this figure, keep your eyes peeled for more news as it comes out. The last bit of news this week is a fun remold coming from Perfect Effect. Following in the footsteps of Magic Square making God Gamma Rise out of just anything they want to, Perfect Effect has remolded their Jet Force Commander into God Force Warrior, a version of God Gamma Rise slash Power Master Prime with Apex Armor. This looks rather impressive, coming from a version of the Movie Prime plus Jet Fire combination that they originally had. This is just a small bit of the current third-party news that's out there. Please check out our TF Talk news stream for these stories and much, much more. This fine real estate situated smack dab in the middle of our program is brought to you by no one. If you are interested in reaching engaged pop culture podcast listeners, then boy, do we have a deal for you. Sponsorship inquiries can be made via email by reaching out to podcast at tfylp.com. Reach out to us and see if we can strike up a deal. And now back to the show. Time to take a break from the news on Cybertron and transport back to Earth, where real things do keep on happening. On September 10th, Apple held their annual keynote address, showcasing their updated and new product line for the coming year. The biggest announcement for 2019 was the iPhone 11 and the iPhone 11 Pro. The most notable change to this upgraded model is additional forward-facing cameras that instantly became internet meme fodder and the bane of those suffering from tripophobia. Yeah, just look that up. These cameras give further photographic options such as telephoto, wide-angle, and ultra-wide. The iPhone 11 Pro is priced at $999, or a steep discount with the previous iPhone trade-in for $599. Hmm, MP44 or a new phone? Can't decide. These phones will be available in-store on September 20th. Head to apple.com for complete specs and check out the entire live stream for even more details. And now some man-on-the-scene reporting from TF Talk cast member Surge, who attended the alleged final Chicago area performance of the legendary metal band Slayer. Hey everyone, I am Surge. I am a part-time cast member on tftalk.net. I went to a music festival here in Chicago called Riot Fest. It was the final Milwaukee slash Chicago show for Slayer. Uh, I go to metal shows here and there. This was my first time seeing them live. Uh, the, the overall atmosphere Everyone was very excited. I want to say about 80% of people there had at least some type of Slayer merch. You know, even hours before, people were cheering. They were yelling out Slayer. Pretty much the entire crowd was just one giant mosh pit. So if you were not a seasoned mosh pit veteran, I don't think you would have put up a good fight. The best way to describe how I woke up was it literally felt like I fell down the stairs. And uh, it was very emotional once it all ended when they were getting off stage because you could tell that they didn't want to leave. On this week's Fan Spotlight, I'm talking with an illustrious creator that has his own unique take on expanding the Transformers universe with their own world of quirky and unique robots. Take a sip of Robots with Coffee. My name is Paul Zernowski. I'm the creator of Robots with Coffee. Robots with Coffee was just sort of a way to celebrate my toy collection and my love of coffee. I would just go somewhere and bring an action figure of certain shape-changing robots to the cafe and take pictures of them with uh, my coffee. And then it kind of morphed into this thing where I draw comics about robots following puns to the letter and having it backfire on them. If you follow me, generally what you'll see is just an action figure with coffee or a drawing of a robot that I thought up of while I was watching TV or, you know, I I draw like three to four robots a night, it seems. The reaction has been generally very positive, and I'm very grateful that considering what I'm sure some people would probably think is not like the best in art. And I don't mind, I enjoy doing what might 
barely qualify as outsider art. Um, anybody who follows me, if they either get it or you don't. If you don't get it, that's fine. You know, move on. But if you do get it and, and you're supportive, I, I greatly appreciate it. And I just had a Kickstarter last year. My Kickstarter was the Robots with Coffee Coloring Book. It was a catalog of possible action figures. The catalog is obviously for a toy company that would probably go out of business by the end of the book. I'm going to be at TFCon DC. We'll be selling the Princess Robo Mini, Robots with Coffee Number One, the coloring book. And then I hope to have a book about the robot president I've been drawing called You Can Do Stupid Things with me. I'm actually finishing up the cover as we speak. Thanks for checking in on me. Thanks for checking out Robots with Coffee. You can find out more stuff about me at robotswithcoffee.com, facebook.com slash robotswithcoffee. On Twitter, it's at robotswcoffee. And on Instagram, it's robotswithcoffee. And now we'd like to have a convention conversation. This week, we're going to talk about a different kind of convention. This one is one of the big ones, and you've probably heard of it, New York Comic Con, also shortened to NYCC. Although this is not a Transformers-centric convention, in recent years, it has been an event that Hasbro uses to showcase some new toy reveals and even offer some surprises, such as New York Comic Con exclusives. In previous years, Hasbro has conducted publicity panels where they have shown off notable pieces like Siege Omega Supreme's Tank Mode, Titan Class Trypticon's Leg, and gave us our first glimpse of Siege Shockwave last year. Not that I have any prior knowledge, but if I had to guess what big thing they want to show off this year, I'd put my money on Studio Series Devastator in full combined glory. It appears that Entertainment Earth will be selling Siege Hotshot as an event exclusive at NYCC this year much like the Generation Selects that were made available at San Diego Comic-Con, Autobot Lancer, and Galactic Man Shockwave. This news comes from images of lanyard banners that Entertainment Earth has made available on their website. If you haven't seen the in-hand leaked photos of this figure, it is a redeco of Deluxe Siege Hound that homages the Cybertron Defense hotshot figure from the Transformers Cybertron era in 2004. This leaves only one more Generation Selects figure, waiting for a new home, and that's Power Dasher Chromar. Chromar is a heavy remold of Siege's six-gun, and samples of the toy were on display at ACG 2019, a convention in Hong Kong. Could Chromar also be a potential New York Comic Con exclusive? Only time will tell. New York Comic Con is a massive event held at the Javits Center in Manhattan, not far from Times Square. The convention will be held on the weekend of October 4th, and the HasLab Unicron is also expected to have a large presence since his funding window concludes at the end of the show on October 6th. And speaking of... He's big, he's bad, and he's still being funded at Hasbro Pulse. This is Unicron Watch, a special segment where we follow the progress of the currently developing story surrounding this monumental Transformers figure. If you listened to our last episode, you will recall we spoke with Rob about the recent extension added to the backing deadline. An additional five weeks were tacked on to the original deadline, and this week we have TFYLP host Lucas to weigh in on the aftermath of this decision by Hasbro. Hi, I am Lucas Bockelman, and I am the host of the TFYLP podcast. The funding for the HasLab Unicron was supposed to end on August 31st. They actually ended up extending it in order to try to, you know, get it over the line. As soon as they announced they were going to extend it, though, it has actually, like, been flatlining. And it actually has went down by uh, about a dozen backers since that point. As of this recording, you know, 11 days later, the, the trend is not looking good. I could see Hasbro pushing out some new reveals for Unicron to try to get the excitement. I mean, they really need to do something to try to pique everyone's interest. So I think it's still going to fun. So even though it's flatlining right now, you know, as we get closer to the end, I think that what kind of happened was is a lot of people said oh well i was planning on backing it but now i have an extra month and a half or whatever i'm just gonna wait and so then i think you're gonna see them hopping back on at that point you know assuming that it does fund thank you lucas for joining the show last episode we mentioned that it would require 77 more sales per day to fund unicron a week later that number has increased to 96 units per day with only 24 days remaining The Unicron Watch segment will continue until we find out if Unicron proceeds on his way to production or oblivion. 
Coming up next on the TF Talk Network is Microcasters, which streams live every Tuesday night on the tftalk.net Facebook page. This week, Christian, Anna, and Lucas are going to give a firsthand live review of Generation Select's Power Dasher Zatar and Nightbird, which recently were delivered to those that pre-ordered at Hasbro Pulse. If you're on the fence about adding these to your collection or just want to join in the conversation, check Microcasters out live at 10 p.m. Eastern, 9 p.m. Central every Tuesday evening. You can also end your week with one of our newer shows, Cut the Tape, with Rick Alvarez. This is a pre-recorded video show, and this week Rick is opening up a Combiner Wars Devastator. How he was able to resist cracking open this bad boy for so long, we shall never know. Actually, you might discover the answer if you watch the show. Expect Cut the Tape to be posted to the TFYLP YouTube page at 5 p.m. Central on Fridays. There's also our flagship group discussion video podcast, TFYLP, which is broadcast live around noon Central on Facebook and YouTube. We have a new timeless discussion topic every week, and host Lucas Bachman recruits a new group of cast members to join in the discussion. And last but not least is Ouch My Wallet, streaming live on Wednesday evenings and hosted by Rob, who stopped by to give us a little more info about this weekly live show. Hey everyone, it's Rob, host of Ouch My Wallet, part of the TF Talk Network. Ouch My Wallet airs Wednesday nights at 9 Eastern. Ouch My Wallet started life on the main TFYLP show, but we have spun it out to its own show. It's 99% Transformers. We might throw in a sprinkle in a little bit of other things here and there. Kind of a first impressions, kind of an initial hands-on. And we just generally talk about anything that comes to mind while we're playing with our new toys. It's a live show, so you can join in and watch with us and chat with us real time. We're happy to answer. It's very chill. (laughs) It's, It's a lot of fun to do as well. And also, I hate to do this so soon after starting the show, but we will probably have to take next week off due to some conflicts with a supervillain named the Suck Lord trying to take over Chicago. We'll be back with you soon, though. Well, if I learned one thing this episode, it's that we should not record the news so early in the week. MP38 Burning Convoy is already old news. If there's ever anything you think we should be covering, you can always email us at podcast at tfylp.com. You never know, we might even read your email on the show. We leave you now with this moment of zen from cast member Hang all the way in Australia. Man, Transformers and politics is just not cool. I just want giant robots fighting each other. Thanks for listening, and this is Mr. Starscream signing off. I want to thank all the tftalk.net cast members that helped me out with this episode, and if you want to give a shout out to your favorite cast member or just give us some helpful feedback, you can always reach out to us by emailing podcast at tfylp.com. I mean, I know I keep beating you over the head with that email address, but seriously, we just want to hear from you, and I want to read some cool emails on the air. The TF Talk Network exists from the efforts of an enthusiastic collection of Transformers fans all across North America and beyond. The concept was created by Duran Land, and the main show, TFYLP, has continued for over 10 years due to his diligence and care. The cast at the TF Talk Network is always growing, so if you have a desire to participate, reach out to us via any of our social platforms, although the TF Talk Facebook page is currently the most active. You can directly support the podcast and keep us on the air by becoming a monetary supporter of TFYLP on Patreon. Donations to Patreon are used to cover expenses incurred by running the shows and are not distributed to any individual staff members. Thanks for listening. See you next time. Start over. Scratch that.